Right, here we are. We are doing a movie that is asking what is the relevance of learning from Las Vegas, the famous book that was published in 1972 by Robert Venturi, Dennis Scott Brown and Steven Eisner. And is it still relevant for architectural education? And when did you come across first time? And when did you see the book and did it have any impact? So we're asking around 20 prominent architects and urban planners in the United States about the relevance of this book. I'm very pleased to talk this afternoon about Denise Scott Brown, one of the authors of Learning from Las Vegas. I had the privilege of meeting Denise on two occasions and what struck me as being so uh, inspiring was her, her really sharp insights about the world uh, and very much uh, when it's necessary being a contrarian. Learning from Las Vegas to me is a little bit like Vitruvius. It's always been there. The book Learning from Las Vegas, which was published in 1972 in the first edition, and then there is a second edition that came out in 1977, which unfortunately was a little bit cut, is very relevant. It was the first major publication documenting and analyzing Las Vegas, its structure along the strip. I read it in college in the mid 80s, and it was required. Uh, but I was fascinated with Las Vegas and it really meant to me that architecture really can be anything. We were taught to design to the environment and to the location and to the land, but really modern architecture really can be anything and can respond to the culture that's part of whatever city you're designing in. Lo leí siendo estudiante de arquitectura hace 20 años. ¿Y qué recuerdo de, de, del libro? Por suerte, eh, recién tuvimos una conferencia que me hizo recordar el libro porque realmente lo había leído en ese momento y no lo recordaba tanto. Pero ahora eh, recuerdo que lo que más me impacta sobre el libro es cómo los autores se adelantaron 50 o 60 años a lo que podemos ver ahora que ocurre con la cultura de la sociedad, el hecho del consumo de la imagen como cosa fundamental. I read it as part of my required text uh, as, as a undergraduate student at the at Rice University. Even back then I realized how different it was from everything else. Uh, because it was a completely different way of looking at cities. It was a groundbreaking book, and I actually I heard Robert Venturi give the give a lecture based on the, the manuscript for the book. I first became aware of learning from Las Vegas when I was in college back in '72, and it was a very controversial book at the time uh, because architectural education was dedicated to modern architecture, and it was derivative from Bauhaus educational practices. What learning from Las Vegas talked about is that maybe architecture should not be based on the Industrial Revolution anymore. Maybe architecture should be about digital technology rather than building technology. There were professors in Yale and they always brought, 50 years ago it started, every year a group of students to run a design studio on the strip and on the significance of this new type of instant urbanism. 
I am quite certain that I read part of it in a freshman year history of architecture course, but I'm also quite certain that I didn't actually do the reading because I was a very uh, irresponsible student. I mean, it, here in Vegas, it's in your face, the decorated shed, the notion of there aren't very many ducks here, but there are plenty of decorated sheds. I was at Georgia Tech at the, in the late 80s, uh, so it was probably 20 years after the book was, uh, after the studio, the original studio took place in 68. And as a, as a freshman, we were given complexity and contradiction in, in architecture, which I still think today that it's a difficult, it's a complex book for a, for a freshman. It's still a complex book for me, I'm almost 50 years old. I learned about learning from Las Vegas when I was in graduate school at uh, UNC Charlotte's School of Architecture. I think at first I had very few impressions. Las Vegas wasn't worth talking about. So it was a very interesting study in architectural education, but the subject matter was less interesting than the methodology of the study. I was introduced to learning from Las Vegas when I was a student in architecture school. And back then, uh, in, in my mind, for me, the book was interesting in, in the way in which it engaged uh, drawings and representations as a way to investigate the city. I remember skimming through it and looking at the, at the images and never fully reading it as a, as a student. I think years later as a graduate student at the GSD I came back to it and, uh, and I started taking it a little more seriously. What resonates me, I think the, uh, the magnitude of the economy in terms of resulting to architecture of sort of experimentation and the prime work of Denise Scott Brown is the documentation of how it relates to the behavior of culture in terms of an open land such as the desert. Well, when I first read it, it was maybe 10 years after it was published when I was an undergraduate architecture student. And then I thought, wow, so um, what we see every day on the street, the strip and all those big signs mean something, they're important, and we have to think about that, and maybe they can be architecture too. So I read the book right before I moved here. Um, I thought it was a pretty interesting way to sort of look at Las Vegas, and it helped me sort of shatter the a priori you know, ideas I had about it uh, before. I have an interesting lens to look at any place, and I, I think it still really holds a lot of weight now. It's, it's an interesting way to sort of understand Las Vegas, or really this sort of phenomenon of Southwest American cities. Uh, I discovered it uh, made me like an undergraduate student. I was studying architecture in Venezuela. I graduated from Venezuela. So actually learning from Las Vegas was a really discovery for me. I was maybe in my first or second year at that time. Um, it really, uh, I think it really opened my mind in terms of what architecture could be. I discovered the book late, actually. And the book, uh, the, the title of the book was inspiring to me. My first scholar book was learning from all their houses about architects' uh, houses for themselves. So um, I think I picked it up when I was uh, just beginning to be an uh, architecture student in graduate school at UNLV in Las Vegas, no less. So I thought it might be interesting to see what the book is talking about. And uh, I find it a very interesting analysis. It's a simplistic way of separating the two types of architecture. And for me, I was rather new to it. So it was just a, a totally fresh perspective for me to look at architecture. So Las Vegas was set into mythology in the 80s, I would say, for, for me and my classmates who went to school in the 80s. And the most important artifact towards the understanding of postmodernism was learning from Las Vegas. I have to admit, at the time, in the academic environment, there was a lot of resistance towards this book. There was a lot of resistance towards postmodernism. To, to anybody of my generation, that's a little bit like asking somebody how does your DNA affect the way you think? Uh, I would say that learning from Las Vegas is really embedded in the intellectual and creative DNA of anybody who has um, thought about architecture after 1972. 
It did have an impact on my thinking because I grew up in New York City. I was completely unfamiliar with Las Vegas and with the phenomenon of the suburbs or sprawl. And so it really opened up my eyes as an East Coast person to, as I said before, an entirely different social arrangement of space and also a visual language. Well, as it turned out, I ended up practicing in Las Vegas. So learning from Las Vegas became something that we certainly needed to know about as practicing in Las Vegas. From an entertainment perspective, as a tourist, this idea of creating fantasy places is in fact architecture. Using references from mannerism, I, I always felt mannerism was so, bo so boring and so, I don't know, just frivolous compared to the deeper strains of our in architectural history. So I never bought into it. Initially, it's controversial because we're taught to design as form follows function or responding to the problem or the issue or the land um, or the end user. Um, but it needs to be relevant with, with uh, and integrated into the landscape. I, I, wouldn't, I would not say it was controversial at all. It, it just made so much sense being in a city like Houston uh, to have someone looking at the architecture of American cities and, and looking with an architect's eye uh, at things we were not used to talk about, uh, you know, billboards, uh, signs. Uh, the way it changed my thinking, I still reference it when people don't understand about um, how architecture and the form of architecture can impact both the exterior and interior environment. I no longer see it in the, in the thesis, uh, that aspiration for poesis, for, for poetry. And to tell you the truth, after teaching for 20 years at, at the school, I've, I've never seen a, a student uh, citing it or, or talking about it. The, the book talks about the um, signs being the architecture of persuasion. Um, and I think now as you drive down Las Vegas Boulevard, it's really the, the buildings that are the architecture of persuasion. When I read the book, uh, for me what was provocative, first was the idea that it, it brought not just architectural design and form, but architectural theory, representation, and, and urban planning and design into one large investigation. Uh, say the parking lots or the billboards and brought that into the conversation, brought that as almost architectural elements which, which I never even looked at them until then. I actually loved because I, was, I kind of felt like I was in the closet when it comes to being able to appreciate Americana. So I think what that meant to me, what it opened up for me was that Americana has a value and that you can find beauty and design in the simplest things. Well, I think at the end of the day, what um, they, Bob and Denise helped us to re-look and to observe and understand what's really happening out there. To me, it, it was not a controversial book. I think the, the, the controversy of the book had, had been settled. But what I began to imagine as a, as a prospective educator, uh, I was still a, a grad student at the time, I thought we need to keep doing more of this learning from Las Vegas, but perhaps instead of learning over the course of a couple weeks, a visit to Las Vegas. A lot of it comes from a perspective from a ve vehicular culture, looking at architecture from the outside. I think it's an interesting way to look at the Southwest, you know, our newer cities in the American West. Um, but I mean, I think, you know, in a way, maybe it does transcend, you know, beyond Las Vegas and even beyond Southwest. It had an impact on my thinking even today. The way that Venturi Scott Brown were thinking about architecture in terms of a new um, image, in terms of media, was really fascinating, but they were looking at those artifacts in a very architectural way. First, it was very important to me to read a book that was uh, written by um, a man and a woman, right? 
First of all, learning from Las Vegas. To me, Las Vegas was just a, an image. It wasn't something imposed, you know? When you are talking about ING, you know, you are saying something that is going on. Uh, learning from Las Vegas, uh, it's, a, it's a book that was extremely important and in a context. So I am really critical of how we are reading Learning from Las Vegas today and how we, are, we have mystified this book. I think it's always going to be relevant. I, I think uh, uh, hopefully the, the today's students will be a little more talented and, and, and smarter and, and more mature than I was because you need a level of, of, of maturity to, to digest what it's doing. Learning from Las Vegas was of course significant then but is as significant today. Uh, again, not just in, in its ability to introduce new ways, new theoretical approaches uh, or representational techniques to engage with the city, but also to, to produce a knowledge and put it to work. Rightfully so. It's very relevant because it's a continuous uh, application of, of trials and error in terms of the economics of architecture. It's almost like the modern time of writing history back then during the classical architecture and now we're writing the modern version of it. It's a book in which you see deep and sophisticated minds working hard, managing um, the confrontation with objects that were then alien and incomprehensible. So what, why it's relevant today would be that it might point or encourage students to ask the question, what do I not recognize the value of? And what kinds of tools do I need to develop in order to understand them? Sí, es completamente relevante y, y creo que trasciende el campo de la arquitectura porque es, es eh, un estudio cultural, es un estudio de la cultura de una época que luego de transcurridos 60 años se ve hoy día potenciado ese, ese, mismo, ese mismo mecanismo que analizaron ellos, esa información se ve hoy mismo. They have no idea that um, important people and many thousands of important people have thought about this um, urban palimpsest that they work with every day. And so when I teach learning from Las Vegas to students today, it teaches them a couple of different things. It teaches them to pay attention to the ordinary. It teaches them that nothing is below scrutiny. In fact, sometimes the most banal and obvious things actually have a rich trove of information and perspective in them. Um, but I think it also teaches them in a weird way that their lives and their upbringing, especially here in Vegas, though one could say the same of Phoenix or Albuquerque or whatever, are important. A city does not need to grow or grow over time slowly, but we can make city artificially and construct it within a second. And that's basically worthwhile, worthwhile analyzing and rethinking today because this is what happens, of course, a lot in China, in the Middle East, where cities get built overnight. The book is definitely relevant today. I think the, the readers of the book make it relevant and the, the readers that put forth a, a new voice. So, you know, say whatever you will about specifics, but I mean, the overall ideas of how to look at architecture, I think are still pretty critical today. I think this book is a seminal example of, of a way of doing that. Architects um, increasingly need to feel empowered uh, by their own careers. Um, and I think that what we need to be able to give our students uh, in school is the understanding of how to empower themselves as practitioners and thinkers. I, I think as students, it's critical that we understand that most thinking about architecture is derived from some theoretical basis. Architects need to self-determine how they see the world and then apply how they see the world to their practices. I think the book is still very relevant today. The book separates buildings as heroic and original, uh, meaning ugly or ordinary. Still, today, Las Vegas needs to be powerful, original, and welcoming. This is still something very relevant and something that we use as we design casinos every day. 
one of the first articles I wrote was called Learning from Houston, just, you know, just directly paying homage to, to learning from Las Vegas. And, and it, it, even, you know, even more than, than as an architect, as, a, as an architectural educator, uh, just the idea that you could draw lessons from anywhere uh, you know, ha was very important from... I was, in fact, I was talking also to some colleagues today uh, that about the, the, the need of reading this book again. If that happens, the book is more than, you know, than just a book. I think the, the book is a really interesting piece that is right now out of context. I think it's, it's interesting to read it when you have enough education to understand why it comes, and if not, it is a kind of uh, extremely superficial uh, reading uh, that is actually really dangerous. I think it's, uh, it's a book that has had its moment in history, and at this moment we need to unlearn from Las Vegas, I think. Learning from Las Vegas is still be controversial, even for the student nowadays, but uh, if you compare with other books, even with contradict complexity and contradiction architecture, I think learning from Las Vegas is still powerful, is still polemic, is still making people think about even the new generation. And I've had the pleasure and the honor of working our Las Vegas trip now for some 41 years. And with the Scott Brown and Venturi visits to the desert southwest and their Las Vegas studio now some 50 years behind us, Coupled with the fact that some of us have been doing this longer than others, I just so happen to be marking my 41st year here in Las Vegas in a matter of days. But who's counting? It seems that all I have to do is view an aerial photo and or an image of that oh-so-fabulous era. Even the prize fight boxing posters from Caesar's Palace in all of its glory and before it was Romanized, to resurrect another fond reflection of the quintessential everything mid-century and the scale that Denise Scott Brown and Robert Venturi encountered, experienced, and studied. And just some 10 years later, some of us hungry, however less appreciative, and probably a little insensitive, Naive but driven, young architectural designers in our teams started dismantling those ducks and decorated boxes as Las Vegas left the mystique and inherent beauty of boutique for a big. Sorry, I still regret even thinking about what Las Vegas was back then.